Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing very well. So today I'm here to do something a little bit different. Um, this is something that I've kind of never done on my channel before so I thought let's be a bit adventurous today. So I'm doing a kind of get ready with me story time. So if you could probably tell by my title, um, I'm going to be talking about um, kind of when I used to work at a cinema in central London. All the famous people that I've kind of met. Um, I did a poll on my Instagram a while ago just asking if people were interested and a lot of people did seem interested um, so I thought I would film it. The next time I will do one is me talking about me working in a really big comic book store in central London and meeting more famous people because if you don't know me, I mean, if you don't have me on any of my socials, I'm constantly talking about, not constantly, but I like to talk about all the kind of famous people I met and not, I'm not gloating at all. It's actually just kind of, kind of, it's just the weird circumstances that I have worked under because, um, you know, famous people come to the cinema, famous people come to comic book shops. And I thought, let's just talk about it because it's just something quite fun and it's not serious and... Yeah, and I just think a lot of people might be interested. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to put on a full face of makeup. I have one or two new products. I'm not going to talk about them in the video, but I'll kind of point them out. Um, just because they're products that I've been waiting to try for ages. But I don't have a full face to put on um, to call it like a new full face of makeup. So next time I'll do that. So let's just get on with it and just rambling. So yeah, <laughs> basically, um, when I was in university, so this was around, God, 2008? Wow, <laughs> it was a long time ago. Uh, 2007, 2008. Um, when I joined university, I was like, you know what, I need a part-time job because, you know, I need to make money, my own personal money, instead of it being like my student loan and stuff like that. So prior to that, I did have you know experience in retail and I've worked in a couple of places but I was like you know what one of my dreams as a child was to work in a cinema um and I don't because I've you know my whole life I've been obsessed with movies and just obsessed with like film in general and meeting famous people and stuff I was like you know what I'm gonna see if I can work in a cinema and I applied to work in a cinema so um, in Leicester Square which is called Empire at the time so if you go to Leicester Square if you know London quite well there were there are three cinemas in the middle there's a big one which is Odeon then you have View Cinema and then you have Empire I was working there at the time when it was called Empire then they converted it to um, Sydney World and now I think I think it's closed because of Covid um, but anyway yeah I worked there for a, around three and a half years um, so this was during my time at university and then when I graduated in 2010 I was there for about half a year and then I left. Um, so <laughs> it was really weird talking about it because it's been such a while since I've actually spoken about working in the cinema because it was such a dream of mine when I was a kid and you know the realisation of oh this is not what I thought it was going to be you know a lot of the times a lot of it was kind of, you know, I was expecting it. So yeah, I got to see some movies for free. I um, got a discount on food and, you know, stuff like that. But the actual retail aspect of working in a cinema is really exhausting. It's really frustrating. It's kind of working like in a normal cinema. Not sorry, it's like walking, working in a normal retail place where you have entitled people and you have people who are just stupid and don't know where you know they can't think for themselves and you know working in the cinema just kind of added on top of that retail aspect for me that I've gotten used to <laughs> but yeah so that cinema used to be um kind of one of the main places where they would hold really big premieres and I mean like really big ones even you know the ones that Odeon used to do were like the main ones as well but I always felt like Empire were kind of the next one below them just because there were certain movies that Odeon one more, one more kind of prior to getting like you know all the Star Wars movies and most of the Harry Potter movies and stuff like that um but whereas with Empire they always had you know they had premieres that were really big and they had some really small ones you know like family and friend ones or a lot of independent ones so they did hold Fright Fest there as well which is an amazing kind of movie festival where basically lots of independent horror movies 
um, are shown in a festival and even some big ones as well um, so I'm just kind of waiting for my primer to sit down but essentially what I want to talk about are <laughs> the people that I've met at the premieres and just really kind of funny stories around it so the first one I'm going to start off with a bang because this is one that I will keep with me forever because it was truly one of the most like one of the greatest moments of meeting someone so it was a premiere for the movie Public Enemies if you haven't heard of that movie it's got Johnny Depp in it and it's got Christian Bale in it and we all knew that Johnny Depp was coming <laughs> because it was just like you know we had a list beforehand knowing what actor or who was coming um, and not even just the actors but like you know other famous people that were coming so um, I was obviously just like Johnny Depp's coming that is freaking insane like of course growing up Edward Scissorhands like you know Johnny Depp has obviously had hundreds of like iconic roles but for me it was always Edward Scissorhands and then you know um sorry my brain's just gone dead uh but like you know Nightmare on Elm Street and everything like that and he had come to the premiere so I'm obviously not going to talk too much about it because I have other ones to talk about um but yeah he came to the premiere and he introduced the movie and he's obviously known to be very um, interactive with his fans. So a lot of the times he, you know, will sign a ton of autographs outside. He would come inside, um, introduce the movie, then go back out and see his fans again because he's just a nice, per a nice cool person. So when he came in, he introduced the movie and um, I'm going to be talking, it's so strange. So there's this ramp. So where I used to work in the cinema, screen one, was for me one of the greatest screens I've ever worked in. It was absolutely beautiful. The screen, I'm going to try and put a picture here if I can find one on Google. It was just, you know, like, because the IMAX cinema is the biggest cinema, like the cinema screen in Europe. But I always felt like screen one was so much more superior because it was just gorgeous. No matter where you sat, you could watch the movie absolutely perfectly fine. So as you walk into the cinema, there's a ramp that you go up because there's a higher level and a lower level and the lower level is pretty much closer to the screen and that's where the actors and directors will come and introduce the movie um so all my colleagues we all had to stand at the ramp during the whole kind of um speech that they would do and you know the guy you know the director and actor introducing the movie and of course he you know introduced the film and as he was leaving <laughs> i was standing next to one of my supervisors and he was just kind of, you know, Johnny was just kind of saying hi to everyone and just like, thank you, thank you so much, just like being genuinely really nice. And my supervisor, he kind of put out his hand, he's like, oh, really nice to meet you. And then as he kind of was walking past, he just put out his hand for me to shake it. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, Johnny Depp wants to shake my hand. So I shook his hand and then he kind of just walked off and I was just standing there. And all my colleagues around me was just like, you're just shaking hands with Johnny Depp. And I was like, yeah, I know. And then you know that moment you're just like looking at a hand just going, did that just happen? And I was just absolutely just shocked. And this is like the first time that I've ever had a celebrity kind of like acknowledge me or just kind of like say hello or talk because, you know, most of the time with these premieres, the actor doesn't want to be there. They just want to like go there, introduce the film and go home. Um, <laughs> but with like with people like Jolly Depp, he just seems just so genuine and so nice and he would just happily just say hello to anybody um so that was basically um one of the kind of craziest moments of me ever working in that cinema uh because it's Johnny Depp I don't know how many times I need to say it <laughs> but yeah he was just one of the nicest people he's just gorgeous and amazing and just he just seems like a really nice kind person um so yeah, that's my Johnny Depp story. <laughs> um, I kind of want to go down a bit more kind of talking about just people that I've seen because I have um, kind of interacted with a lot more celebrities as well. I guess the next one that I want to talk about is um, quite an interesting one. So I, this is one that a lot of people will probably freak out about as well. So during the time there, I had worked dozens of premieres, like literally there was a premiere every maybe other week or maybe sometimes once a couple of times a week depending on how um what film was coming out and you know if they were available to like have the premiere and stuff and uh, this was the premiere for scott pilgrim now this is obviously 
you know, big movie. There was so much hype around it when it was coming out because it was directed by Edgar Wright. And obviously before that, we had um, Shaun of the Dead and obviously he had done Spaced and everything like that. Um, and of course the cast in it, you know, the whole cast came to the premiere and I got to see everyone. But <laughs> the one that is, that stands out for me the most, um, sorry, I'm just trying to find my brush. Um, so the premiere had finished and, you know, a lot of the cast had kind of like, was sitting in the movie watching it and I had finished my shift and I was determined to meet Chris Evans. So when you're working at a movie and working at a premiere, it's pretty much forbidden and you can get in deep trouble for, um, meet, you know, like going up to an actor or going up to a celebrity and talking to them because essentially when you're working, you're meant to be professional and you're meant to, you're not meant to be, but you are, <laughs> you, you know, you're supposed to be professional. Um, I was just like, you know what? My shift is over. If I get to see Chris Evans, I will try and say hello to him. I will do what I can. So I was standing outside the con the, con the concession stand where you have all the popcorn and you have all the hot drinks and food and stuff. Um, and like I said, I was out of uniform and I was just standing there because I was waiting for him to come out because I knew that he probably wasn't staying for the whole film or he wasn't staying for the whole time. As he, as I was standing there, I saw him leave with his assistant and I went, <laughs> I'm so, like, I don't know why I, do, I embarrassed myself. So I went, Chris, Chris, oh my God, can I please have an autograph? And as he was walking away, he actually stopped and turned back and went, yeah, of course. And I had this really like ugly notebook on me, which was, um, a diary that I used when I went to uni and stuff just to kind of like keep record of what I was doing um, and he just went yeah of course and I had my pen I had a page ready and he signed he signed it and then he walked he went oh thank you and I was like no thank you so much and then, and as he walked away I went congratulations on um, you know becoming Captain America because this was just announced that he was going to be playing Captain America and of course, I had to embarrass myself a little bit more. And I just went, I love you. <laughs> and he's just like, <laughs> and his assistant was like dragging him away. And I was just like, I hate myself. But at the same time, I got to see Chris Evans in the flesh. And that was, oh man, he, he's, he's fantastic. I think, you know, of course, regardless of like the whole, um, like Avengers and stuff like that. I really, you know, love Chris Evans, even in like the Fantastic Four movie. And even though in uh, Scott Pilgrim, it was just a, a little cameo, I think he was one of the main people that really just made that movie so amazing. So that was pretty cool. Um, I've got a list of all the people that I have met and I'm trying to like pace myself because I'm talking way too fast and I'm sorry if this is just a bit weird but I'm just it's just weird talking about it after all these years because I do talk I do tell people that I you know met this person and that person blah 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 but then sometimes talking to a camera is a bit more different because it's just a bit more funny um but people that I've seen in the flesh and this is one that I I will hold dear in my heart forever um this was a premiere for Righteous Kill so this is a movie uh with Robert De Niro Al Pacino uh, 50 cents in it <laughs> shit um, and that movie was um, you know not taken so well I like I quite like it I think it's all right um, but yeah there was a premiere for it and I got to stand next to Al Pacino and Robert De Niro <laughs> like that happens every day um, so this was it was very strange because like I said you know that famous ramp that we all have to stand on the side of um, they had gone to introduced the film even though they didn't say a thing I'm pretty sure they just turned up waved to everybody and walked off so it was one of those things where you're there you're present and then you just walk off and just get on with your day um but when when they had like gone to the front waved to everyone hello um they after that happens obviously the movie just kind of starts straight away so everyone is just like watching the film um I was just standing there on the side towards like the, the, the door to leave um, and they were just casually standing there and I can tell you Al Pacino is one of the smallest people I've ever seen in my life it was so funny just seeing them two standing next to each other and you know I I'm a really big fan of their movies like I 
I can't even just comprehend how much I love the Godfather movies, how much I love Heat, how much I love them too as individual actors. And to see them standing right next to me, I was actually just shocked. And of course, you know, what the job that I did was just working in retail and, you know, just doing a job. But when you see people that you've idolised and not worship, but like absolutely just loved and adored for so long and they're standing in front of you, it's just a moment that you have to take in because it's, you never know when that's going to happen again. Of course, I didn't talk to them because I probably would have been fired on the, on the spot, but I just took the moment in just knowing I was in the same room as just two of one of my favourite, two of my favourite actors. Like, they've also worked with my favourite actors. Like, it's just, it's just shocking to kind of, um, comprehend and of course they're be them being so iconic and just you know everyone knows who they are and the fact is that they turned up to this premiere was just insane to, to be honest they're probably the most famous people that I've seen in the flesh a lot of people these days might consider that not so great but people of you know my generation and generation lower will understand what I mean um why is my neck really orange Oh, this bronzer is not, hang on, I think I might have messed up, <laughs> what's new? Um, right, so let's talk about someone else, who should we talk about now? Um, yeah, I saw um, Robert Downey Jr. and Jude Law at the, um, show, the first Sherlock Holmes premiere actually, so that was really interesting. They had come to introduce the movie like they always do and yeah, I just got to see them like talking to each other and in the foyer they were just like pissing around and just having a joke and having a laugh and that was just really cool to see because later on actually in my next video my forbidden planet video i talk about jude law in much more depth because me and him became friends like we were till friends <laughs> you know, whatever that means um but yeah and then to see them that was pretty amazing um i actually <laughs> so this is this is such a weird i'm so i'm going all over the place because i just don't know how to tell you these things that happen because they just i can't remember when they were happening um but they they happened basically so this was the premiere for i think it was the first madagascar and again like most most premieres most of the cast turn up so everyone is there doing their thing you know introducing the movie talking whatever and of course on that famous ramp me and my colleagues were standing around waiting for the film to start because then you know once the film starts you have to go out and working your normal things because when the movie starts the cinema kind of then reopens most of the time depending on the time of the day um to just get on with your work or you finish your shift whatever um so yeah this is the premiere for the first madagascar movie i'm pretty sure it was so ben stiller was there uh chris rock was there i can't remember who else was there so as we as they were leaving up the ramp i said hello to ben stiller and he went hey how you doing and he just like patted my arm and just like walked off and i was like that's pretty cool. And then as Chris Rock, Chris Rock, as Chris Rock was leaving, one of my colleagues ahead of me, she was just standing there just kind of like, because you know, most people who'd worked there for years just fucking hate premieres. Like a lot of people would just kind of work obviously to make the money, but then a lot of them would just be like, all right, I'm booking a day off because I fucking hate premieres. I quite liked working them. I thought they were quite, um, just interesting depending on what the movie was just quite interesting to see like what was happening that day but um yeah so this <laughs> so this was um so she was standing there and just kind of just you know just waiting for them to just like go basically and then Chris Rock had like looked at her and just went smile be happy <laughs> and I was just like oh god a comedian is telling telling you to be happy so that was pretty funny um but yeah, Ben Stiller was pretty cool. He seemed like he just did not want to be there, which is fair enough because, you know, a lot of actors, they have to travel around the world to, you know, to promote these films. And especially if it's been a long day or if it's out of their time zone, they just like, oh, I don't care. I don't want to be here, whatever. But it was still nice to really see him. Um, I A few people that I have, um, when I was working as an usher during these premieres, um, I got to see quite a lot of people. So one of the ones that I 
kind of remember the most this is really interesting so i don't remember the premiere but i um i had seated guy ritchie and at the time when he was married to madonna i got to see their kids as well so that was pretty awesome so what happened was um the madonna's daughter lord lordess i think her name is i think um she was kind of like on the side of me and i was just seating them and i accidentally dropped the premiere cards because back in the day back in the day um you know to kind of promote these premieres you would have a premiere invite which was like a piece of card that had the premiere on the front and on the back it would have like your seat and details and times like that so she gave me those and I dropped them because of course I'm an idiot and she actually was really super sweet and like picked them up for me and just went here you go and stuff like that and I was like not many people would do that like a lot of you know famous people would either just be like fuck you doing <laughs> thankfully I've not had anyone really be like that to me during the time so that was pretty handy um I got to see one of my comedy heroes Terry Gilliam that was pretty freaking insane he was just a bit miserable that was a bit funny because he I was like hi how are you and he's like yeah I'm all right and I was like he's like here you go and I was like oh it's just over here and the whole time I was standing I was just like watching him this this miserable old man who has made some of my favorite comedy movies and you know some of my favorite films as well like time bandits and fucking 12 monkeys and stuff and just sitting right there and of course I was just like this is way too much sometimes for me like I was just like just in awe just seeing him in the flesh but you know it's just part of the job that you that you do and of course I just was professional and just get on with it um who else I I seen um Jack Black like in the cinema as well but I think I'd already left the cinema so this was me going to visit some of my friends because i would made some amazing friends working there and when it was open and when they were still working there I would go and see them just to kind of pop in and say hello and stuff like that um, and of course even you know during not even not during premiere times a lot of famous people would still come in and just like watch films and stuff so that's pretty amazing um, oh I forgot to talk about one of the other premieres that I absolutely loved. So I worked for the first Star Trek premiere, the one that's directed by J.J. Abrams, um, and the whole cast turned up for that as well. And this was at the time when I was obsessed with Chris Pine. Like he, I think, yeah, this was obviously before the movie had come out, but I was obsessed with him because he is uh, freaking gorgeous. And <laughs> I'm just going to say it out loud, you know, he is absolutely just gorgeous and they all turned up and this was like I think the whole cast was there as well because um again with a lot of these premieres all the actors turn up so it's just amazing to see them all in the flesh um and yeah I got to see Chris Pine I got to see Zachary Quinto I got to see Carl Urban like just amazing beautiful people um in the flesh and I was just honestly just standing there just like this is my job this is like pretty cool but then of course sometimes the novelty wears off um so i'm just i'm looking at the palette i'm not like looking down is i'm still trying to decide what what look to do now um yeah so yeah i um i've worked so many premieres like i said i've worked all the ones that i've mentioned i worked on the last harry potter premiere that was actually the last premiere that i ever worked on before i left so i um kind of got to a point where i was just like look i don't want to work here anymore <laughs> anymore i want to just look for somewhere like full time and that's when i got a job at forbidden planet uh which i'll talk about next time um but yeah the last premiere that i worked at was the last harry potter movie i don't think i saw anyone because everyone was going to the odeon cinema um so i mean i was like that's fair enough but of course we had so many like people throughout the like the day because the people were camping outside to go to this premiere and at that time I think it was actually like really bad winds that day I remember because they had um the premiere was taking place kind of around um Trafalgar Square and it was like the whole of that area was just locked off because of this premiere um but I don't think anyone famous had come down because what most premieres tend to do they're being held by the three cinemas but then it would be Odeon who would get all the actors and directors and all the kind of famous people and then the other cinemas would just get other people to 
um, just sit there and watch the movie there just because of capacity and just stuff like that. All the kind of like, not be mean, but the rejects <laughs> would go to the other cinemas. But yeah, honestly, working in premieres, working like just with so many people was insane because not many people would get to do it. Of course, like working in a premiere, you would be exhausted, you'd be tired, but you didn't have to clean up at the end of the day. So that's pretty handy. If you weren't, um, if it was like a premiere where it was the end of the day, because most premieres would start around seven-ish and then it would finish around probably 10 o'clock. Um, and then you could, I just dropped my mirror, shit. Um, you would be able to just, just go home because they would have people overnight cleaning. Um, to save a bit of time now, I'm gonna put my mascara and my lips off camera and I'll be right back. Okay, so I managed to just, yeah, to finish everything off. But yeah, this is such a weird thing to talk about because I have spoken to so many people out loud about it but talking hopefully it will reach quite a few people if they're very interested in watching it but yeah if you have any questions about working in a cinema what it's like just ask away because I'm very happy to talk about it. it's been a very long time since I've worked in one it's been over 10 years now so I'm surprised I remember most of it but yeah um, in my next video I don't know when I'll film it maybe probably next week I'll talk about all the people that I've met at Forbidden Planet and I'll show you pictures as well because I managed to get quite a few pictures with a lot of them so if you're intrigued in seeing that don't forget to subscribe to my channel just moving that in there a bit so yeah just so you know when I do it and don't forget to follow me on my social media as well because I'll be posting it there yeah don't forget to like this video I really appreciate it to all my new subscribers as well hello if you're watching thank you so much you're making me smile every time I get a new subscriber um yeah everything that I'm wearing I will leave in the comments um but yeah thank you so much for watching I hope you have enjoyed the video I hope you're doing how <laughs> I hope you're doing well, you're healthy, happy, and you're safe. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.